if you are using 3D software like Blender right now, then you are blessed. Because those who wanted to learn 3D in the early days, I mean in the 90s and 80s, were not as lucky as we are today because we have free 3D packages like Blender and affordable software like Max, Maya, Houdini, and so on. Hold on a minute. Did you just say that Max, Maya, and Houdini are affordable? What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Yes, I said that. But hear me out to understand why today's market is merciful compared to what we had in the early days. But I would say the worst thing right now is the subscription model, which tries to extract every last dollar from you on a regular basis so they can make as much money as possible. I know that 3D software right now are expensive, but the point of this video is to show you that in the early days, 3D software were super expensive and almost no one could afford them. For example, did you know that at some point, most 3D software were at least $10,000 per license in the 90s, like Houdini costing around $17,000 at one point. And if we adjust that for inflation, it will be even worse. So now if we go to the inflation calculator, $17,000 in the 90s is around $39,000 of today's money. So now let's break down why 3D software is super expensive and how digital art became available to everyone. You see, the market of 3D software was relatively small, and demand was driven mainly by high-end industries such as film and gaming, and this is one of the main factors behind the extremely high prices of licenses. So the limited size of the market made the software more expensive. Back in the days, there weren't that many 3D artists and certainly not that many animation, VFX, and game development studios. Even worse, in each studio, there weren't as much artists as we have today. For example, now, in a single Marvel movie, CG artists work on thousands of shots which involves several VFX houses and hundreds of artists over a period of months due to the nature of VFX work and how VFX has become a solution for every problem on set. If they can't fix it on set, they say we can fix it in post-production. In the early days, most effects were practical, like explosions and other effects. Also, this applies to game development as well, because the amount of video games created every year is staggering, which creates more demand for 3D software and 3D artists. Another reason why 3D software were super expensive in the early days is complexity and difficulties of development. So, like any other cutting-edge technology, 3D animation software development was hard, and this was the case on so many levels. I mean, it was insanely complex. Just to create an animated box, there is a lot of math and algorithms behind that. Now imagine creating a software that can create models, textures, animate and render huge scenes without a single problem with its code. Sometimes it crashes, but you get my point. You can easily say that 3D software developers are scientists and artists at the same time, which makes it even more impressive. Also, you can imagine what computers were like in the 80s and early 90s. They had significantly less processing power and memory compared to what we have today. Which means basically your potato computer has way more power than the best thing we had 30 to 40 years ago. This limited the complexity and detail that could be achieved in 3D graphics, like really badly. For example, rendering realistic scenes with advanced lighting and shading was often slow and required considerable optimization. Additionally, in the early days, there was a lack of standardized file formats that can make data exchanges easily. We now take all of this for granted because we got used to it, but this made it extremely difficult for different software to communicate and share data, meaning that each software company had to come up with its own stuff. The worst thing that can make your head spin is the fact that in the late 80s, 3D software like Max, for example, didn't have a user interface that we know today. Like, it was really primitive, because it operated on DOS operating system. So, developing intuitive user interfaces for 3D software was a real challenge, like a big one. Also, graphical user interfaces were still in their infancy, and designing a user-friendly and efficient interface for complex 3D tasks required innovative solutions. 
So 3D artists often had to navigate through command line interfaces or complex menus, which from today's standpoint seems frustrating, I'm not gonna lie. If you are not convinced yet, you have to keep in mind that some of the early 3D software companies had a monopoly on the market, and they were able to charge high prices due to lack of competition. But the amazing thing is, it is still pretty much the case. Even though we have come a long way from the old days, I mean the old days of scarcity and absence of balance between demand and supply. Today pretty much we have 3 or 4 companies dominating the market, which are of course Autodesk, Maxon, and Side Effects for the most part. Even though Adobe is trying to enter the market too, with acquisition of software such as Substance Painter and Designer from the algorithmic company, which was acquired in recent years. In the 90s and early 2000s, we had basically Max from Autodesk, Maya from Airlist, that was then acquired by Autodesk in 2005, and Softimize that was passed around by companies like Hot Potato before it landed in Autodesk's hands in 2008 for a $35 million deal. So if you were a 3D artist in the 2000s for game development or VFX, your options were either to get an Autodesk product or Houdini which was expensive and has limited functionalities like in animation and modeling, or Moto which was great but with a limited functionality to modeling for the most part. In addition to Lightwave, which was great, but lost steam as things moved up over the years. So basically artists and studios were stuck with Autodesk, but luckily they didn't go crazy expensive like side effects with Houdini. Because I believe 3ds Max for example, never reached the $4000 mark, but it was and still is very expensive for many people. As I said earlier, software development when it comes to 3D software is hard and expensive. And even if a company had the resources and the know-how to create an amazing one, it still has to go through the hurdles of being integrated in the industry, which is really hard. Some 3D software tried to get a wide adoption by 3D artists and studios at large, but they failed. Some succeeded spectacularly like Moto, and then fell from grace, because it could not keep up with the changes and demands of the industry and especially the artists using it. Or to be honest, it failed to keep the audience it was created for in the first place. I hope this drives home the point that Monopoly was and still is a real thing, so whoever want to break in the industry with their 3D software has to break an insane amount of value or have a strong competitive advantage. Like ZBrush as an amazing 3D sculpting software that offers artists value by providing amazing features and tools that can help them work on complex organic stuff such as creatures, human characters, animals, or anything that resembles organic stuff. But surprisingly, it is great on hard surface modeling too. We also have Substance Painter and Designer, which became an instant hit it feels like, because it is so good at creating materials and texture painting and people love it. Generally speaking, nowadays software are kind of affordable, especially with free ones like Blender and other open source software. So unless you have a studio or you are obligated to use a paid software like Max, Maya or Houdini, you can do amazing stuff. The problem nowadays is the subscription model, which feels like a greedy one, because it wants to charge you on a regular basis. In the old days, you can just get a license work with it like 3 to 4 or maybe 5 years, and when you feel you want to jump to the next version, I mean the coolest and the hottest versions on the market, you can do that with your own will. In these days, you have to pay for a license on a continuous basis under the subscription model, which by the way generated billions for companies such as Autodesk, which made their company double in value at least. This is crazy, like real crazy. These guys know what they are doing because they want to increase their profits for the company itself, for the investors and the shareholders. Well, I hope you guys found this video useful and informative. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. You can also check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.